Learning the nerdy parameters and image prompts and image weighting and all of that is one thing, but what if you just want, what if you just want help describing the thing that you do? Maybe that's not a skill you excel at. Like it's, it's, it's all you really need to do for AI art, but if it's not something you're good at or you just want someone to walk you through your examples to give you something to base it off of, this episode's for you. Welcome back to my Mid Journey Masterclass. I have a full playlist link in the description with all the videos so you can walk through at your own pace, chapter markers, all of that. In this episode, instead of focusing on the parameters, your image prompts, any of that, we're focusing on your actual descriptive language and how you can improve it using some assistance of some tools. We're going to check them out. I'm going to have a bunch of links in the description of resources that you can reference for improving your prompt craft in the first place. So we have first the documentation from Mid Journey themselves, which describes what you should be looking for with your words, since that's what we're focusing on this time. So for example, speak in positives, avoid negatives. So don't say something that is not something else, something that is except something else, or something that is without something else. It should be instead of a person half robot, it should be a half person half robot. It's not going to pick up on what those negative descriptors are and that seems kind of obvious to some but a lot of people speak that way so it's worth keeping in mind if you want specific compositions of course you describe those there's a lot of stuff in here use specific uh, numbers or singular nouns so instead of cyberpunk wizards you want three cyberpunk wizards those kinds of things um, and then also just generally practice with ad libs, like in general, like they provide some examples, but like, I think ad libs and mad libs are like great ways to kind of figure out where your prompts should go. So that's a good resource. The second one is a full Google doc from a mid journey user that actually talks about your structuring of your wording. And so here's a template of how you should describe it. You have your subject, a botanical bearded fairy prince, you have your details and surroundings then your stylization, and then your parameters. And so you've probably seen from the examples that we've done, I have my subject, descriptors, and extra engine details, and then parameters. And that's how I've been structuring it myself. And so that is 100%. If, if, if you're struggling in the Discord thing to figure it out, step away from Discord for a moment. Open a Google Doc or open your favorite text editor here and just identify what you want to describe. So what? We want a space emperor what about him ruling the cosmos floating in a nebula in outer space with a supernova behind him render details that's where we add in the hyper detailed octane render Kerpuscular, ker, crepuscular rays? I don't remember now. And so you structure it out like that ahead of time. And you can do this on a pen and paper, digital pen, type it up in a notebook, whatever. Write that out ahead of time. And then you can just plug things in into your Discord prompt. So slash imagine you start with the what? A space emperor, comma. Ruling the cosmos, floating in a nebula, supernova behind him. And then you add in those details. And then, of course, your parameters and your arguments. But we'll just leave that as it goes. And then you hit enter. And that's a good way to think about it is what, what about them, and then render options. It, unfortunately, it's not as cool or clever as who, what, when, where, why. But actually, where kind of goes for it as well. But you get the idea. This guide also has some recommendations for grammar. So, for example, prepositional phrases... Flowing in the wind isn't very good versus flowing hair. Eyes the color of a sunset, sunset eyes. You kind of got to get simple so that it can take as few words as possible to get the idea that you're going for. And then if your character is doing something, it needs to be using, you know, verb phrases, using actual verbiage. And in fact, I kind of did that wrong here because I did floating in a nebula, but with a supernova behind him is still kind of too passive. So let's take this and improve it. You can see how each one of these videos are building on the next one so that if you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't work in one of the previous videos, I'm probably improving upon it in the next one as I explain the details more. I just don't want to throw too much at you and overwhelm you, especially given these are already super long and there's a lot of information. Floating in front of a supernova. Now, the nebula and supernova are conflicting, so I'm going to take that out and I'm going to move in outer space 
after supernova, in front of a supernova in outer space. Now we should start getting closer to what we want, but we have left out some of the details from the previous guide of the formatting. So it said, uh, if you want a specific conversation or co composition, we haven't described our shot yet. And now we can go in here, copy this command. We want a portrait of a space emperor floating in the cosmos, blah, blah, blah. Because this is trying to do some big epic scene, which is fine, but not necessarily what I'm going for. If we specify a portrait, it's going to focus more on the person himself or herself or whatever. That also plays into the aspect ratio tips that we talked about in the previous episode. Okay, this is actually making some dope scene. I don't know where it's getting the angel wings from, but I kind of love it. That was when we changed it to floating in front of a supernova. And now you see here we're getting more of a profile view where it's focusing on the head or the, you know, the upper part of the person when we specified a portrait. That matters as well. That's a lot closer to my original goal I was working on. All right, let's also talk about punctuation real quick because this has been confusing for a lot of people. Some people use plus signs in between phrases in their prompt, but as far as I can tell, that's just what's considered noise. It's not super helpful. This talks about how punctuation should either be functional or noisy. The ones that matter for the most part are the double hyphens for your parameters and then the double colons for your image weighting and spaces. But... There's what they're calling here intriguing noise, which are the commas that you see me using, and then also hyphenation. So, like, combining words can kind of increase the relationship between them, whereas commas kind of separate them. So, an, inor an ornate, shadowed, massive sentient might be described as kind of one thing versus separate adjectives, ornate, shadowed, massive sentient. And playing with those relationships can also tweak how your description comes out but in terms of like a plain text descriptor of a specific thing m some of my commas here don't really matter but it helps if it helps you organize it it can not necessarily hurt you so much but if you're not getting like if you feel like something's being left out or it's not being emphasized enough you can remove those to experiment with how you want or add more in to experiment with how you want it to do for your double colons like the image weighting you need to have your wording right before the double colons and then these and then you can just separate your image weight by a space so for example if we're image weighting slash imagine we'll do our usual dealio if we want to weight the space emperor i can just delete the comma because it's already going to be separated because i'm specifying i want a weight of two there and you don't have to add a comma after that that could get kind of confusing you just do the double colons you fire it off and it's then going to focus more on the space emperor as a result due to weighting it down. Now, if you want to try to recreate text in your prompts, it's very difficult. Midjourney struggles a lot with text, but you can do so using this image I will link below. It's just uploaded to the Discord, but I'll show it on screen. In that, you need to post the words in quote before a double colon and then a space and then a description that repeats the word or letters that you want to describe in context and then the rest of everything you want going on. And they messed up the double hyphens there. So if we want to try to recreate this, we want to type space, colon, colon, the word space drawn in neon letters in front of a nebula in outer space. And actually your, your in quotes words should be in all caps most likely. Uh, octane render dash dash AR 16 by 9. And here we're trying to recreate the word space. However, if we take that prompt without the word space in those colons and repeat it and all of that, we're going to get something looking a little funky. So I'm going to do the same thing there. And if you see text show up in any of my pieces, you know it looks like some weird combination of like Russian, Chinese, and English, and it never turns out right. So we're going to do this. Although I will say the image guide specifies that you should specify like a, f a, a physical format. So a magazine, a book, things like that. So we may not get exactly what we want here. Actually, both of these worked. You just got to you, you gotta play with it. You can see for all of them, it's putting two A's. It really struggles with correct spelling. We got spe... Or actually, that's spache. Spache. That one's space. And that one's soes. And then... 
spay. So you have to do some photoshopping work to clean up your letters, but you can get kind of close. I also, of course, wanted to recommend that you check out a thesaurus. This sounds kind of condescending, and I don't mean it to, but I feel like these days dictionaries and thesauruses aren't really recommended a whole lot, and it's a book or an, a website that can help give you synonyms and antonyms, words that are like the words you want, so you can get more descriptive language to more accurately describe what you want. So instead of just pretty, you can come up with more, you know, beautiful, uh, d d relaxing, calming, whatever you want, you know, words to get better versions of, especially when it comes to adjectives and to the specific verbiage you use for active states, like holding or, you know, presenting, those kinds of words. You want to get as specific and yet tuned to your AI algorithm as possible, and a thesaurus can help with that, so link in the description if you need it. Now, I did promise a tool that would help you actually write your prompts, and this is it. This is called Fraser.tech. It is free, but you do have to make an account for it. And here you can see it actually has prompt crafting help for different AI generative tools in general. But here we're going to go with Midjourney, and it's going to walk you through the steps that I've kind of described. So first, what is the content type? A drawing, a photo, a sketch, a 3D render, a render or you can specify some other type of image. So we're going to say a photo. Now, describe the object you want to generate, and it gives you some parameters to live up to. So, a space emperor with wearing, remember, we got to do active verbs, wearing a military jacket, holding a magic staff. Loading in outer space in front of a supernova. All right. Now, I have gone over on words. It This specific tool recommends between three and seven words. It's hard to stay between that sometimes. Um, but you want your noun, your adjective, and a dependent object makes it easier because otherwise it loses hands and arms. All right. Next. And I'll have this linked below. Play with it all you like. Then you can choose specific styles for photo photographers or painters or whatever mode you chose. Um, it'll give you a kind of randomized example that'll change a little bit each time if you want specific, you know, examples of photographers to reference, or you can specify your own. I'm going to come in here and I keep reading that as Dave Chappelle. I wonder if that's on purpose. Um, we're going to do in the style of script. We'll do Annie Leibovitz. And then do you need it? Colorful, sepia, black and white, or other. We're just going to say multicolor. I don't find that one super helpful. I think it kind of distracts from it because it starts adding in random colors. Um, and then 4K ultra high detailed. And then you want your, your, your camera angle. Do you want a fast shutter speed? Do you need bokeh blown out? You only get to choose one of these here. But um, for this, I'm going to choose a, uh, a close-up. Actually, no. We're going to go back. We're going to do ultra wide angle. And with a feeling, we're going to say confident. Okay. And then epoch, which is just like the era that you're creating it in. We're going to say it's in the future. Actually, no, we're going to go back. We're going to say it's in the Middle Ages. <laughs> and here you go. It gives you a prompt. It doesn't give you the parameters. You still got to go back and watch the last video to figure out parameters of how you want it to craft the image. But in terms of the plain wording, you get that for you here. So then you can copy text. It'll take you to mid-journey already. I didn't mean to click that. We can just copy the text. And then come in here, slash, imagine, paste all of that. And then we want to do, again, aspect ratio 8 by 10 for our portrait. And then we want to do, we don't want to do any stylization because we just want to see what it generates based on what we fed it from this Fraser.tech website. It's just a really handy tool. It's not something you need to live by, like, religiously. But if you're really struggling to figure out the wording and you need anything to guide you and give you practice with any of these AI tools, this is a fantastic resource. And I have it linked below. There's a reason I saved it until the end of these talks about prompt crafting because I, I want to I want you to understand everything that's going into it. It's fine if you're just playing around and you just want like to have something handhold you, but you're not really going to be making your own art with your own meaning unless you understand the impact of everything that you're doing here. Plus, like I said, I kind of make recommendations that vary from how this specific website cr crafts your prompts based on how I feel things matter more. And so you kind of got to combine them. You use what you learned from me plus this to help guide you. And here you can see we got a very interesting looking portrait. That one's getting into the multi-arm territory. That's unfortunate. It's not holding a magic staff. It has lost that detail. 
Um, so then we can get into waiting. So I can come back here, slash imagine, but you get the idea. Like it, it gives you what you want. So I'm going to say a comma after military jacket and then holding a magic staff. I'm going to put a two for image weight there. Generate that one. This is just a smaller companion video to the last episode of the image prompt generation. I do hope you find this helpful. I don't want this to be a roadblock for people using these tools because obviously prompt crafting itself is a skill. It's an art. It's what's going to separate people from, you know, who generates memes and not so great images versus who generates the top tier images out of these apps. But I do believe that it's easy enough to understand because it's just description and you just got to tweak how you think about it that eventually everyone can wrap their head around it. And I hope that these videos help you do so. And here you can see we've added in our magic staff kind of. It's more like a lightsaber. So maybe we have to describe the magic staff a little bit more. But you can see where we start iterating from there. In the next couple episodes of this master course, master class, whatever, for mid-journey, we're going to get into some upscaling tools, and these tips will actually apply to a lot of AI tools, but we're going to look at it from the angle of mid-journey, talk about the upscaling methods within mid-journey so you can get larger images, and how you can upscale even further beyond that using additional tools, as well as a whole episode dedicated to upscaling specifically with print in mind to sell your own merch, like you can pick up mine at analogdreams.threadless.com. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know your questions or comments in the comment section down below. Let's chat about it. Let's get more episodes of this going to answer your questions. Uh, come join us on Discord, discord.gg slash equalsfox. We have a whole chat room dedicated to this. I'm going to revamp, be revamping the creative channels in a moment um, to help improve that usability a little bit. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for more awesome art and AI art creative tool videos. And remember to be kind. Rewind. If you're making something awesome with this stuff, tag me on Twitter as well.